भगवान श्री योगी राम सुरत कुमार की सर्वों योगी राम सुरत कुमार बिफोर वी सबमिट और मॉर्निंग प्रेयर अगेन आई वुड लाइक टू ब्रिंग certain conversations to your attention because they have to be remembered again and again in one conversation somebody asked yogi ram sarat kumar bhagwan swami what is a sin what is a meritorious deed Swami said remembering God is a meritorious deed forgetting God is sin and then again in some other context some other person asked him what is right what is wrong i often get confused between the two i am not able to make right decisions because of my confusion and pat came the reply from bhagwan remembering god is right forgetting god is all wrong and again some other time in some other context bhagwan repeated the same thing in a different way he said remembering god is dharma forgetting god is adharma another time when i happened to be there there were many vips sitting and then the topic came as to know what culture is swami went around asking people what is culture what is culture each one had a different reply to give and finally they all looked up to bhagwan to tell them the right reply and swami said whatever you people said is okay they are necessary but along with all that this politeness diplomacy not losing one's temper unnecessarily all that is okay but remember with all this if he does not remember god he cannot be a man of culture and again i remember another context when a family had come and there was a young man married he was putting this question to bhagwan he said swami what is the way to peace of mind Yogi ji looked at him sharply there was a strange expression on his face and then he said my friend looking after your parents with care and concern will lead to peace of mind that young man didn't understand it was particularly pointed to him he put another question what if he do not have parents what will those people do then bhagwan said sharply that is not your concern you have parents your peace is in taking care of them with concern so we have to remember all these teachings of bhagwan and every time the best teaching is remembering god that is the very purpose of life for which this body is given to us this life is given to us and we should not fail in that 
And Bhagawan often said, remembering God is remembering the name. Remembering the name is remembering God. And remembering God is living in God. And those are the moments we truly live. Only when we remember God, we truly live. The other times, we are dead. So remembering all this, let us submit our prayer to Bhagawan. Prayer has power, just as repetition of the Nama has power. We have submitted the Nama at the feet of Bhagawan. And before we start this evening's prayer, we will once again see a story of His Nama's glory. After the Samadhi of Bhagawan, there was one young man by name Natarajan Mariyappan from Chennai. He had given an interview in one of the big IT companies, which he did rather well, but the result, when the result came, his name was not in the selection list. He was very disappointed, very dejected, and it was a Pounami day, so he came with his friend, the friend who asked him to apply for the job, who is also working in the same IT company. So he took that friend and both of them came to Thiruvannamalai to go round the mountain to do the Pradakshina. So while they started, a little distance away, there was an elderly man who was singing songs on Lord Shiva, at the end of which every time he would say, Yogi Ram Sarutmar Maharaj Ki Jai. And then he would sing a song again on Shiva, and then immediately he would resort to the name of Yogi Ram Sarutmar, finally ending it up with Yogi Ram Sarutmar Maharaj Ki Jai. Somehow both of them were drawn to him, and they started to join him, and they were listening to his songs, and when he was singing the name of Yogi Ram Sarutmar, these two people involuntarily joined him. And that way they did the whole Pradakshina. But Natarajan Mariyappan says that there was no love at all, no devotion at all in his heart. In fact, his heart was filled with fear, agitation, there was turbulence in his heart. And with all that, he was just singing the name Yogi Nam Sarutkuma, not paying any particular attention to the name or Bhagwan. When he went back home in Chennai, the very next day he got a call from the IT company saying that, you have been selected for the job, please come and report. He just could not believe that. How could that be? His name is not even at the selection list. And what is more, he rang up to his friend and said, look, there is a call from your company. He said, don't believe that, it must be some wrong information because your not, name is not even in the selection list, so it cannot happen, just not possible. So he gave up. And then after two days, it repeated itself. Again there was a call from the same company, it's a big company. There's no need for them to call second time when there was no response at all, but they did. And this time again he rang up to his friend, his friend repeated the same thing, look, this is some wrong information. Don't believe that. It just cannot happen. But then he was thinking, twice the call had come, at least I must go and see what it's all about. So he went all the way to the company and inquired, and then they said, they showed him 
the order for appointment. It was his name, undoubtedly, and he jumped in joy, and he knew instantly it was the Nama that he was chanting, which was haunting him ever since he came back. He became very devoted to Yogi Ram Kumar because it's a very good job with very good salary in a big company. It could have happened only by the grace of the name of Yogi Ram There was absolutely no other way. He also said something else happened to him later. He was posted in Germany and then he went with his wife and children to Germany and when they landed in the place where they had the flat, it was midnight. So when the taxi brought them to the flat, the building of the flat, even while traveling in the taxi, he was very worried because he had developed some neck pain some time before and it was severe. And the doctor said very strictly that he should not lift any weight. So he was very worried because he had four big boxes, very heavy ones. So he was chanting it, there was no other go except chant Yogi Ram Saratkumar and seek his help. And of course he did it wholeheartedly, the whole family, all the four of them, were chanting, chanting, chanting. And when they reached the flat, there was a man standing there, very stout and well-built, strong. To Natarajan, he looked like Hanuman. At twelve o'clock in the night, there must be somebody there standing right outside the building. And Natarajan, without even thinking, said, Sir, would you please help me with these boxes? They are very heavy and I am at the doctor's instruction that I should not carry any heavy thing. And that man, without saying anything, immediately picked up all the four heavy boxes and started to climb up the stairs. And within minutes he deposited them at his flat, at Natarajan's flat, and walked away, literally disappeared. He could have gone to the second floor, third floor, or he could have disappeared into thin air. But to Natarajan, it seemed that Bhagwan himself had come in that form, or Bhagwan had sent Hanuman to do this job, just for the sake of this devotee, his pathetic call. For every little thing and for every big thing, Natarajan is chanting Bhagwan's name, not only he, his entire family, not his wife and children, but all other relatives, the whole clan, chanting Yogi Ram Sarutmar Nama and surviving happily because of that. Now we have to pray to Bhagwan Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar after chanting his powerful name up till now. We know that not a single Nama goes waste and not a prayer goes waste. So let's pray, Bhagwan. Before offering our prayers at the lotus feet of Bhagwan, I would like to share a particular incident an incident of the glory of Bhagwan's Nama, Bhagwan's grace, Bhagwan's boundless compassion. There is one Mrs. Kalyani Bose who has written about this. She says that there is, they are conducting Nama Bhajan every Thursday in their place, Virudhinagar. One day, they got a phone call about one young lady of only twenty-one years, second time pregnant, but she had with hepatitis, which has gone to, which has become very acute. And she was admitted in the hospital 
for her delivery. The doctors did not know what to do at that stage. What was more, the blood clotting, she did not have this particular quality, that is the blood clotting. The blood is unable to clot, which means they cannot do cesarean to her. There will be so much a flow of blood and if they don't clot immediately, it means a certain death to the mother. So the doctor said, if it is natural delivery, it would be possible to save the mother and the child, but if it is cesarean, we cannot guarantee anything. So when they gave up, the phone call was received by Mrs. Kalyani Bose, and immediately, it was about 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. in the morning, and Im immediately eight ladies joined together, sat before Bhagawan's picture and began the Nama desperately. They were chanting and chanting and praying and chanting and praying. There was no other go. And at that time, it was, they started at 10.30, around 11.20. One of the ladies there, Mrs. Selvarani, saw a vision. She saw Bhagawan Yogi Ram Sarutma standing at the doorstep, looking on these people here, chanting and praying. He was blessing. At the same time, from his forehead, a huge ball, a black ball, came and fell down. And after that, the vision disappeared. And these people, not knowing what was happening, they continued their Nama chanting with such involvement and love till 11.30. At 11.30 they got the news, they got the phone call that the delivery had happened and both the mother and the child were safe. You can imagine how happy they would have been just one Nava Nama chanting, intense, soulful Nama chanting. And much little later, they went and met the girl. The girl was healthy, she has almost recovered. And when these people met and asked her what happened, they also reported that Mrs. Selvarani had a vision that Bhagwan came and stood at the doorstep and something black, a black ball, fell down from his forehead. And the girl was surprised, she was delighted, and she reported that it was about 11.20 that a black ball came out of her womb. It's only after that the delivery happened comfortably, and they all knew it was Bhagawan's glory, Bhagawan's boundless compassion which has done the whole thing for them. The impossible became possible, that the mother got back her life and the child because of the Nama chanting, intense, soulful Nama chanting and prayer. Just think of the generosity of the heart of the, all those ladies who immediately gathered and chanted His name, inviting this relief for everyone. Now we have been chanting the same Nama for so many days, both morning and evening. We are very fortunate to do so and we have offered them at the feet of Bhagwan. Now we shall offer our prayer. Today evening, before we submit the prayer at the lotus feet of Bhagwan, we shall see some of the incidents that illustrate, that depict 
the glory of Bhagwan's Nama, the glory of the power of Bhagwan. Many, many people who come to the ashram or who have contact with the ashram know very well Sri Swaminathanji. He has settled down right outside the ashram and is putting in work from morning till night here in the ashram. Once in 2004, there was no rain, the whole of Tamil Nadu was suffering from lack of rain. And in order to invite rain, invoke the grace for rain, Sri 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 Murali Dara Swamiji suggested that for 48 days the devotees must gather every day in one place and from morning 6 a.m. to evening 6 p.m. They have to do Nama Sakirtan of Yogi Ram Sarat Nam. So for 48 days. So this was going on and one of the days this was to be held in Sri Swaminathan's place in Pammal. At the time in the Pammal house, Mrs. Swaminathan, Kanti Swaminathan was living there with her daughter and Sri Swaminathan ji was here in Thiruvannamalai. But for this particular day, he went over to Chennai to arrange for this Namasan Kirtana and to participate. So the previous day itself, he went to the house where the previous day Namasan Kirtana was held and took the main picture from there for the next day puja at his house. And next day morning, 6 a.m., the Namasan Kirtana started like a celebration, so many devotees had come and Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar, Jaya Guru Raya was going on gloriously that many, many devotees were coming and going and it was reaching an intensity. At about nine o'clock, when one Mrs. Kala Shanmukam, a devotee, saw that there was no oil in the lamp, she immediately opened a cupboard there near that and there were two bottles. In one was uh, this gingerly oil kept, in the other was kept the Aradhana Abhishek Thirtam, the water, Abhishek water from Aradhana celebration from the ashram. And both the bottles looked alike. So Mrs. Kalashan, not knowing, she took the bottle of this Abhisheka water, thinking that it was gingerly oil, because they looked alike. She poured that and filled the lamp. Sri Swaminathanji was going round, singing the name, suddenly saw this happening, but before he became aware, the lamp was full with the water. So what, what could he do? Immediately he prayed to Bhagavan Sri Yogi Ram Kumar, Swamiji, just like Shirdi Baba, kept the lamps burning the whole night with water. When he could not get oil from any of those grocery shops, because they all turned against him and they refused to give him oil. And so Shirdi Baba burnt the lamps with water the whole night. You also please do some miracle and let the lamp keep burning with the water, your Abhishekam water. So this prayer was going on in his heart all the time. And of course, Bhagwan, how could he keep away from this prayer? The lamp kept burning till 6 p.m., till 6 o'clock in the evening despite this water. Stunning everybody when they came to know because Sri Swaminathanji did not tell anybody until six o'clock. It's only after that he revealed what happened and everybody was stuck with wonder. So this is again the boundless compassion of Bhagwan that he came to the rescue of the devotee at his beck and call.
Shri Swaminathan ji has two granddaughters. One is called Swastika, the other one is Subhiksha. Their parents, Lalita and Suresh, they are living in Bombay. In 2010, they bought a flat. At the time, Swastika was only about nine years old. Swastika often heard stories of Bhagwan, such glorious stories of Bhagwan, from her parents and also from grandparents. So much so that her heart was longing to have darshan of Bhagwan. She used to cry that she missed out on Bhagwan's darshan. And she would often cry for the darshan. And she had also heard that Bhagawan would appear sometimes in the form of butterflies. She was very happy with the butterflies always, and she was hoping sometime that she could have the addition of Bhagawan in the form of butterfly also. So this new flat, they had to celebrate the Graha Pravesa, the entry into the house, the new house, it's a function, it's a celebration with lots of prayer and uh, sacrificial fire. So they had fixed a date and Sri Swaminathanji and his wife Kanti, they went over to Bombay to attend the function. On the previous day to the function, these people, the two granddaughters, their parents went to the flat they saw that the woodwork was done very well and then they cleaned the place. They prepared the place for the next day's celebration. And after that, they closed every door, every window, all the glass windows and the main wooden door. They locked it and came out. And the next day, early morning, 4.30, all of them arrived there. The flat was on the eleventh floor. So they climbed, they went by lift to and reached their flat. And then they opened it. And to the delight and surprise of all the people, especially Swastika, who so much wanted to see Bhagwan in the form of butterflies, there were so many butterflies in the flat. How could they have come? a closed, locked house, and it was early morning darkness. They just couldn't understand what was happening, but then she burst into happy tears. It, they were all flying, they were crisscrossing the place, flying here and there happily. There were so many of them, they would not even let them walk. So happily, the function started, the sacrificial fire, everything was going on, and as time went by, the number of butterflies began to decrease. And anyway, it was Bhagwan's great, great assurance that he was there, attending the function, pleasing not only the girls, but the elders also by his vibrant presence in the form of so many butterflies. What a miracle! How could this happen? A very special place for this family. And again, Swastika's sister, she would have been seven years at that time, and there was an inter-school recitation of the hymns, the slokas, Sanskrit slokas, and this girl very enthusiastically gave her name. And so on the day of the competition, Subhiksha and her mother Lalita, they went to the place of the competition and to their dismay, they found that the girl's name was not in the list. Imagine how the little girl of seven years would have felt. She was all enthusiasm. She had prepared so well and she was chanting Bhagavan's Nama and praying and praying. But finally, when they arrived at the place, what they found was this, her very name was missing. 
She was so disappointed, so dejected, but then they have Bhagwan's Nama, and so they resorted to chanting the name and praying and praying. In the meantime, her mother, Mrs. Lalita, she talked to some of those teachers, and then the principal, after much persuasion, the principal agreed reluctantly to take this girl's name also, and she was the last one. And then the competition took place, and finally the last name was pronounced, and Subhiksha went and recited. After praying to Bhagwan. she recited, and then they waited for the results. When the results came, can you guess what happened? This girl got the first prize. All those girls, all those students in the list, none of them got the prize, but she, Subhiksha was the one who got the first prize. Again, another great, delightful miracle done by Bhagwan for the disappointed girl. Such is the glory of our Bhagwan, Yogi Ram Saratma, such is the glory of His Name, such is His boundless compassion. So let us appeal to this compassion, to this grace with our prayer, Bhagwan. Before we offer our prayers at the holy feet of Bhagwan, I want to share two experiences of a certain devotee which will depict how Bhagwan's boundless grace comes to our rescue in times of difficulty, in times of despair. Many pe people who come to the ashram, they know Sri Kumar, who has been supplying flowers to the ashram for so many years with such devotion. Once when he had come here, he told us two incidents that happened. After much persuasion, he revealed them. He said one day his house is in Bengika, a place in Tirubannamala itself, in Kuberanagar, and the place is more like a forest. There are plenty of trees around, plenty of trees and plants. And one day, he was riding a moped with his son sitting behind him. On the way back to his house, on the one side of that narrow road, there were three buildings, beautiful, and they looked alike. He always had admiration for them. So as usual when he was coming, he was completely lost in watching them. And at that time, a twelve feet long snake was crossing that narrow street. On either side there were only plants and trees. This was crossing without knowing, because he was looking elsewhere, he, he rode over it. As soon as his, the wheel touched the snake, he knew something was there, and then to his horror, to his dismay and horror, he found a snake twelve feet long, and what was more, it began to coil round the wheel. It could have coiled round his leg, it was so, so near. That itself is a great miracle, it coiled round the wheel, and it was so close to his leg, he knew that anything could happen any minute. He just remembered Swami, called out, and immediately he said, he told his son to get down, to jump down and run away. And then he also dropped the moped and moved away. He could not have done it himself, because he was in a great shock. As soon as he looked at it, at the snake, so close to his leg and coiling round the wheel, and he could not go ahead, he could not ride over, cross that. 
It's just the thought of Bhagawan that made him act resourcefully. And then when he narrated this, how he was saved like this, so when, as soon as he dropped the uh, moped, the snake also ran away from the place. This is what he said, but he could not complete the story because he was crying so much. He was so overwhelmed by what happened. He was reliving the experience and he was unable to complete it. He cried so much out of gratitude and love for Bhagwan. Another time, he and his son were walking on a beach. They had gone to attend a function in a place called Tirkadayur, and after that, there is one Tarangambadi beach there, and they were walking. And naturally, all those waves of the ocean, you know, they were waves and waves of the ocean, and they were coming up, drenching their feet, and it felt so good. And they were completely lost in the experience, and they were walking ahead. And suddenly, they found themselves falling into a deep pit, about ten feet. Because on that way, without knowing, there was a pit and they didn't know that, they didn't see because they were completely lost. And then he found himself deep in the pit and there was water about eight feet, ten feet above him. His son had also fallen into the pit. And his son, out of fright, held on to his neck, his father's neck. So it became so heavy, he was unable to come out, and there was so much water filling his eyes, his nose, his mouth, his ears. He was unable to call out, though he remembered Bhagwan, he was unable to call out his name, but he just remembered, and he thought there was absolutely no way to come out ten feet, pit full of water, and there were waves over that. He thought that was the end of the two people, and there was no way. And just at that moment, at the very thought of Bhagwan Yaviram Sarat Kumar, a huge wave rose, and it went down, sweeping them up. It rolled over, and with the wave, these people also rolled over, and suddenly he found himself holding onto a rock. And his son was still there at the back, at his back, holding on to his neck. Then he knew in a minute that Bhagwan had come in the form of a huge wave and brought him out, and that he was holding on to the rock, and now he was on the safe region, and slowly, slowly he got over his shock and got up and began to walk, both of them. Again, he was so overwhelmed while narrating it, he said, it's only the thought of Bhagwan that brought that huge wave, there was no way a huge wave could arise at that time, come into the pit and sweep them over to a safer place. How could this have happened? Very unusual. It was only the wave of His grace that brought Him out. So we shall now appeal to these waves of grace, the waves of His boundless compassion, and make our prayer. Bhagwan, beloved Bhagwan, we keep seeing how You come to the rescue of Your devotees at times, even at a mere thought of You. We have been praying for so long, chanting Your name every time, and we make our prayer again today. Bhagwan knows everything that's going on, and there must be, not a single Nama goes waste, not a prayer goes waste, so it must be helping already. We pray again to rescue this entire humanity,